Hello again, everybody. We're going to turn our attention here to uh, stature, particularly short stature. And we're going to talk about the various types of short stature. Uh, remember that short stature and, uh, and growth failure are not the same thing. So short stature includes everything that makes you short. So it could be your genes. Um, you're a short person because you're uh, born to a short family. That's going to be familial short stature, constitutional growth delay, and then pathologic short stature. So growth failure really only includes the pathologic causes of short stature. Now, you can be born to a short family and have pathologic short stature, certainly, uh, but when we're talking about growth failure, that's only referring to uh, the pathologic causes. There's something wrong, and it's causing you to be shorter than you should be. Uh, but short stature refers to all of these. We'll also talk about tall stature. That's not so much a problem. Uh, there may be issues behind it, but this isn't as common of a problem. Parents tend to come in and wonder why their kid isn't growing fast enough, but when their kid is tall, they usually don't come in complaining. Uh, so that's just a reality of, uh, of clinical medicine. This is the growth chart for children age 2 to uh, adults age 20. And uh, then this is the growth chart that we use for uh, children from birth to 36 months. And this is really the important growth chart um, that you're going to be looking at uh, in, in young children uh, failure to thrive. So the normal growth rate is, uh, is early on in life. And when we really look at it uh, as far as the years of life, uh, the most rapid growth rate is during intrauterine life. And the average birth length is 20 inches. So if you actually do the math, the average rate is about 26.7 inches per year. During the first year of life, the, uh, the average rate is going to be about 10 inches per year. The average length of a child is about 30 inches on their first birthday. On their second birthday, their uh, growth has slowed a little bit, uh, so now they're about 35 inches. Uh, so that's an average rate of about, only about 5 inches per year. And then by their third birthday, they're uh, usually on average about 38 inches. So now the growth rate is slowing even more to 3 inches per year. And then by age 4, uh, they're usually about 40 inches, which is 3.5 feet tall. Uh, and then thereafter, their average growth rate until puberty is going to be about 2 inches per year. And once they hit puberty, there's going to be various growth spurts where the uh, growth rate will uh, go up and down based on uh, when they're hitting their growth spurts. A common question that's asked by parents uh, in a family pra practice or pediatrician's office is going to be, uh, how tall will my child be? And the answer to that is it's not completely predictable because it's based on genetic and environmental factors. Um, but the parent's height is a pretty good indicator as to how uh, tall a healthy child will be. So the projected growth formula, and this is really just an estimation. You can give this to the parent and, you know, do the math out and, uh, and, and uh, tell the parent what about they can expect. And the USMLE actually has asked about this, so this is probably a good one to commit to memory. And it's one half of the quantity of the mom's height plus the dad's height, both in inches, plus or minus five inches. And you're going to add the five inches for boys and subtract for girls. So an example would be mom is five foot six, dad is six foot three. So if mom is five foot six, that's 66 inches. If dad is six foot three, that's 75 inches. So if this is a boy, you take one half of 66 plus 75 plus five, which is half uh, of uh, 146. That works out to be 73, and that's six feet one inches tall. For a girl, it's going to be half of that value minus five though. And that's going to be half of 136, which is 68. And so that will be 5 feet 8, eight inches tall. So note that uh, the boy is a little bit shorter than dad, uh, and the girl is a little bit taller than mom. And that's usually how it works out. Um, but if mom is significantly taller, she doesn't need to be taller than dad. If she's significantly taller, though, uh, the boy can actually be taller than dad. Uh, so this is the formula that you're going to use uh, if the parent asks. Again, this is an estimation. And there are various things that can happen to the child uh, if there happens to be pathologic short stature uh, or various genes. Maybe the boy might be shorter like mom or maybe the girl might be taller like dad or vice versa. So you can't always predict it perfectly, but this is a general uh, estimation. 
when we're talking about stature, it's very important to know the bone age. And we, we estimate the bone age with a radiograph of the left hand and wrist, an AP radiograph of the left hand and wrist. Uh, so we always want to know what the chronologic age of the child is, which is pretty easy to figure out. And then we want to know what the bone age of the child is because we can determine uh, under normal stances or under abnormal stances what our differential can be. So if the bone age is equal to the chronologic age, in most cases that's going to be familial short stature. And in this case, this is going to be a child who has a short family. If mom, if, if mom is five foot three and dad is five foot eight, the child is not is most likely not going to be a basketball player. You know, your short kids are typically born to short families. Short parents have short kids. That's how it goes. Uh, under abnormal uh, circumstances, however, you can have a chronological age that's equal to the bone age, uh, and in this case, you can have genetic causes or endocrine causes. So you can't rule out abnormal circumstances just because the chronologic age is equal to the bone age. If the chronologic age is greater than the bone age, in this case, it means that the bones have not developed as quickly as, uh, as we would expect. And in normal circumstances, this is a constitutional growth delay or just a child who happens to be a late bloomer. And that's perfectly normal, but this would cause the child to be shorter than expected. Under abnormal circumstances, this can be due to a chronic illness, which can stunt growth for a little while, uh, endocrine causes, and poor nutrition, which also can stunt growth. And then on the flip end of that, if the chronologic age is less than the bone age, this can be due to obesity, uh, which can, uh, obesity can, uh, can, can uh, accelerate the closure of the, of the epiphyseal uh, growth plates. And then precocious puberty can do the same thing, as well as congenital adrenal hyperplasia and hyperthyroidism. So again, just going over these, uh, these definitions, remember that familial stature, this is pretty much a genetic cause. Children of shorter parents tend to be shorter. In this case, the chronologic age will always equal the bone age. Constitutional growth delay is the child who's a late bloomer, uh, and they tend to be born to parents who are also late bloomers. Uh, so you can always ask the parent or parents uh, who are in, um, you know, were you a late bloomer? Did you uh, did you hit your growth spurt later on in life? Were you one of the shorter kids in second, third, fourth grade uh, when you were your child's age? And if the answer to that is yes, then that contributes towards your diagnosis of constitutional growth delay. So these children will eventually, uh, provided that they don't have any underlying uh, issues, and they usually don't, these children will eventually reach their normal growth height after they hit their growth spurts. Um, they'll catch up. And in this case, uh, with constitutional growth delay, the chronic, uh, chronologic age uh, will be greater than the bone age. So the bone age is still yet to catch up. So some of our causes of pathologic short stature, and this isn't an exhaustive list, but these are some of the more common things. Pathologic short stature can be recognized either when we know that a patient is, is short, shorter than they should be and they have one of these cases, uh, one of these causes, or if the patient is starts normal uh, or starts small and they begin to cross percentiles. Uh, so some of the endocrine causes can be hypothyroidism, hypopituitarism, craniopharyngioma, congenital adrenal hyperplasia, growth hormone deficiency, and hypogonadism. We'll also see that hyperthyroidism can cause pathologic short stature and that it accelerates the, uh, the, the closure of the growth plate. So with hyperthyroidism, the child will grow very quickly, but then they'll stop growing early. Um, so ultimately that's going to cause short stature as an adult. Um, so some of the congenital causes of short stature include some of these various genetic syndromes, Down syndrome, probably the most common, Turner syndrome, Williams syndrome, Noonan syndrome, uh, prader willi syndrome, achondroplasia, which is one of the more common causes of dwarfism, and then some of these renal cases, renal tubular acidosis, and Barter syndrome, which is a bicarb wasting state. Chronic diseases can stunt growth. Uh, so these include inflammatory bowel disease, cystic fibrosis, HIV infection, which is usually congenital in children, uh, cancer and chemotherapy. And then also, we can't forget chronic malnutrition and failure to thrive certainly is going to, uh, is, is certainly going to manifest in, in short stature, especially if this is a chronic uh, uh, problem. 
And then premature epiphyseal growth plate closure can be caused by various things such as hyperthyroidism and precocious puberty. In this case, the growth plates close too early, and so the bones are, are maturing faster than they should, so the bone age is going to be greater than the constitutional age, or as it says here, the chronologic age is less than the bone age. To work up short stature, you should, of course, uh, determine your, uh, your, your bone age, so you get a plain radiograph of the left hand and wrist. Uh, I'm not sure why. It's traditionally left hand and wrist, but uh, I'm not sure why you do the left versus the right, but that's just traditionally how it is. Uh, you want to get a complete metabolic profile, including liver function tests. You'll get a CBC. You'll get thyroid function tests. You want to get an IGF-1. Remember that IGF is, uh, is the, uh, when you have growth factor, it targets, uh, in addition to other tissue, the liver, and that's going to cause the secretion of uh, insulin-like growth factor 1. And so you want to look for a response because if there's a low IGF-1, uh, that suggests that there's a low growth hormone response. And that's different from having just a general low growth hormone. And then in girls, you'll want to get a karyotype. And in some cases, uh, girls are not diagnosed with Turner syndrome early on when they're when they're babies. Sometimes they are. Uh, but if the if a girl has symptoms consistent with Turner syndrome, particularly uh, if she usually, when we're talking about pathologic short stature, these are usually younger kids, but if this happens to be a 13 or 14 year old who hasn't started to develop some secondary sex characteristics, uh, if she's uh, shorter, uh, maybe has some difficulties in school, especially if she's got webbing of the neck, um, and those are, uh, that's something you can look into, get a karyotype and look for Turner syndrome. And then other tests can be performed as needed based on the clinical presentation. So you see, Back here, you know, you've got lots of different causes of pathologic short stature. Uh, you can do various tests based on uh, what you suspect. But this workup is a pretty, uh, a, a pretty comprehensive uh, workup that's going to lead you uh, to uh, suspect some of these various causes independent of your, uh, of your clinical findings. So some examples of what you might find here. Uh, so the plain radiograph of the left hand and wrist is going to help you determine your bone age, so you'd be able to compare that to your chronologic age. Your metabolic profile, if you have a low bicarb, that suggests a renal tubular acidosis. If you have a low potassium and a high bicarb, that suggests Barter syndrome. A high creatinine suggests renal disease. Chronic renal disease can be a uh, source of, uh, of short stature. A CBC, if you have a high sed rate, that uh, can point you towards chronic disease, usually there's going to be other symptoms that suggest that. You can get other labs that can help you work that up further. Low hemoglobin suggests anemia. Uh, with your thyroid function tests, a low T4 suggests hypothyroidism. You should also, however, uh, consider panhypopituitarism. Uh, and so in that case, you may uh, want to get levels of growth hormone uh, or a response test to insulin. Um, you may even, uh, if, if there's other situations uh, that are present, you may go ahead and just uh, do a CT or MRI uh, to look for a, uh, to look for uh, a, uh, at the pituitary. Uh, IGF-1, if this is low, uh, this suggests a growth hormone deficiency, uh, but it can also suggest, uh, and this we don't typically see in the United States, it's more common in countries in South America like Ecuador, uh, and the reason for that is because of the high, uh, uh, the high amount of uh, Sephardic Jews or uh, people descended from Sephardic Jews, uh, and that's is called Lerone syndrome. Uh, but this is a, uh, a defect of the growth hormone receptor. Uh, and in, in those patients, you would expect to see a high growth hormone level, but a low IGF-1 level. Uh, but anyhow, uh, with GH deficiency, um, that will cause uh, a low IGF-1 level. Craniopharyngioma can also cause GH deficiency, and that's going to cause a low IGF-1 level. And nutritional problems can cause a low IGF-1 level as well. Uh, if the IGF-1 level is low, you should get a head MRI and a growth hormone response to insulin. And then, as mentioned, uh, for various reasons, you can get a karyotype of girls if you suspect Turner syndrome. Management is directed at the underlying cause. 
And most of these children, especially if there's an endocrinologic cause, uh, you're going to uh, refer these children to pediatric endocrinologists. Pediatric endocrinologists, in addition to diabetes, they deal a lot with uh, children with short stature. Uh, some agents that can be used in, in these cases, and they are going to be prescribed by the pediatric endocrinologist, but it's useful to know about these, include somatropin, and this is just recombinant human growth hormone. This is probably the one that's most commonly used. Uh, it's used for growth hormone deficiency. It's used for Turner syndrome, chronic kidney disease. Uh, it can be used for short stature due to intrauterine growth retardation, Prader-Willi syndrome, as well as idiopathic growth failure. Now, on the other hand, you cannot use uh, somatropin if, if you have a problem that's due to IGF-1 deficiency. So, for instance, if you have Lerone syndrome, where you already have uh, a receptor that doesn't respond to growth hormone, then giving growth hormone is not going to be useful. Uh, so you can use mecaseramine for that. Um, that's, uh, that's just IGF-1, and this is uh, marketed as Incrolex. Uh, so you can use that for IGF-1 deficiency as well as various other uh, disorders. Um, then lupralide, uh, also known as Lupron, is used for precocious puberty. And uh, so in these children, um, if there's precocious puberty, remember what's going to happen is that they are going to grow a little bit faster, but if this is not treated, their growth plates will close and they'll actually be shorter than their potential height. So remember that. Uh, you can have a child that winds up with short stature, but they grow really fast early on. And this is uh, typically these precocious puberty cases. Tall stature uh, can be familial, so tall family, tall children. You can also have growth hormone excess from a growth hormone secreting tumor. This causes gigantism. Uh, then uh, androgen excess or deficiency, hypo or hyperthyroidism. Uh, and then there are congenital cases, homocystinuria, Soto syndrome, Kleinfelter syndrome, Marfan syndrome, Fragile X syndrome, and McCune-Albright syndrome. Remember what McCune-Albright syndrome is, you're going to see those uh, cafe au lait spots, and you're going to also have a general uh, hyperpituitarism. Remember Marfan syndrome, you have the joint laxity, Kleinfelter syndrome, these are the uh, boys that uh, have delayed secondary sex characteristics, uh, small, uh, small uh, testicles, um, they're usually tall and lanky, uh, and then uh, there are some of these other things. So Soto syndrome tends to be uh, generally accompanied by mental retardation, uh, so uh, a lot of congenital causes, but most commonly what you're going to see with, uh, uh, as far as children that have tall stature, they're going to be, uh, just it's just genetic. They're born to a family that's tall. So this is a way you can kind of differentiate. You don't need to memorize this, but this is something I came across on Medscape. So uh, if, a, uh, if you have a child that's uh, two standard deviations above the average height for a child their age, um, decide is the child dysmorphic. Of course, if they're dysmorphic, you're going to look at some of these genetic causes. Uh, so if the child's uh, disproportionate, this is things like Marfan syndrome, Kleinfelter syndrome, where the, uh, where the legs are a lot longer than uh, the arms. Uh, so that can be things like Marfan syndrome, homocystinuria, Kleinfelter syndrome. Uh, or you can have, uh, if they're not disproportionate, uh, it can be things like Soto syndrome or Fragile X. On the other hand, if they're not dysmorphic, uh, you ask yourself, is there a recent growth acceleration? And of course, the answer, if the answer is yes, then we're concerned about precocious puberty. So if there uh, are development of secondary sex characteristics early if the Tanner stage uh, has progressed past uh, Tanner stage one in a child where we wouldn't have expected that, particularly we're thinking about children who are five, six, seven, eight years old, um, then of course the answer is going to be precocious puberty. If the answer is no, then we think of possibly hyperthyroidism or growth hormone excess being behind that. Growth hormone excess or hyperthyroidism is not going to cause precocious puberty. If it isn't a recent growth acceleration, then typically these are normal children. So these are just children that have always been tall and they're going to be tall. Uh, so uh, it can be either familial tall stature or just a healthy outlier. Um, obesity can also uh, be behind tall stature as well for reasons that are a little bit more complicated. So if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and write me a comment below.